All right, so hello everybody. Welcome to um, the webinar for today. So today, um, before we start, I just wanna, um, I just wanna inform everybody that this session will be recorded and then if you can all mute yourself, um, we'll, we'll have the Q&A like right after Shilpa's talk and then everybody will have the opportunity to ask their questions either in the chat or you can unmute yourself. All right. So before we start, I'll just have a quick um, introduction for Her Tech Hour. So Her Tech Hour is a passion project of mine and five under uh, five other wonderful ladies. So um, Her Tech Hour is an organization that hosts a web series of educational webinars aiming to inform, connect, and develop women leaders in different fields of technology. So this has been pretty new. So we just started this right after Shelter in Place started. Um, I met all these wonderful founders in the GHC Facebook, actually. So we were able to connect with each other and just talk about how we want to make our Shelter in Place more productive while helping um, other women in our industry. And then, so these are just um, the few, uh, the other women who's involved, amazing women that I work with. And then, right, so I'll just, go on and introduce her amazing speaker. She's totally amazing. Um, I think she's one of the mentors of our co-founders. And then, yeah, she's a senior project manager in Google. So that's like a big wow already. And then she a five time GHC speaker and is going to be another, is going to be a speaker for this year's virtual Grace Hopper conference as well. And also one of the things that I like most about her cause she's a diversity and inclusive leader. Um, without further ado, I would love and honored to introduce Shilpa, Va, Shilpa Ver, I'm sorry, for um, today's webinar. I'll give the baton to her. <laughs> oh, um, can you unmute, please? Perfect. Hello, everyone. Can you see me okay? Okay. Well, it is such a pleasure to be here. Grace Hopper is one of my favorite events of the year. And it is like this annual tradition slash festival for me, just like you guys look, up, look forward to Christmas or New Year or something. I look forward to Grace Hopper. Why? Because when I, I mean, I know you, it's gonna be hard to visualize that virtually over here this year, but when you go to Grace Hopper and the gates open for the first keynote session, you should just see the thousands of women that are walking through the hallways and then you start questioning. They say there is a pipeline problem. What pipeline problem? There are thousands of us here and it is such an empowering, such a motivating experience. And uh, I am so happy to be able to share my stories and um, experience with you all. And by way of introduction a little bit, I. I like uh, like you are already you can already see I currently work at Google. I have been to <laughs> uh, yes, what pipeline problem exactly? Uh, I've been to Grace Hopper six times. Uh, one time as an attendee, the first time, and then five times as a speaker. And this is my uh, sixth time as a speaker. This year, I'll be giving a mentoring session on how to nail your behavioral interviews. Um, outside of my work, I'm actually a career coach and a job interview coach. So this topic is really near to my heart, and I want to help as many as uh, possible, as many people as possible, to land those interviews. And so I, I hope some of you will show up in my session there as well. Uh, I started my career as an engineer, so I'm very familiar with uh, the engineering uh, life and then I switched over to uh, a product manager and I've worked in startups and I've worked in big name companies. I actually led, I founded one company and I'm currently in the process of launching my second startup as well. So um, no, no matter which area you are passionate about, um, whether you like a small company or a big company, um, whether you're an engineer, a product manager, a program manager, chances are I'll be able to relate to your, uh, to your uh, background and be able to offer some advice. Honestly, I wanted to make it more of a Q&A session this, this time, and I, I'm not going to speak a whole lot, but just a little bit on some tips and tricks on what I have found very useful in Grace Hopper over the years. Now, disclaimer, this year is going to be different. 
and there's not a whole lot of information out on exactly how the virtual job fair is going to work so all we can do is guess but a few things that work very well for uh, that have worked well for me work for my clients work for other people is that number one thing you want to do and, and i'm going to just guess that most of you are going there looking for a job so by a show of hands and uh, i know you have the capability of showing your hands up by a show of hands how many of you are going there hoping to get a new job and i can't see the hand in the picture you have to raise your hand in the zoom uh, uh, participant okay okay actually the way it looks like a lot of you are going there for look for a, uh, a job that's that's great um, now put their hands down and now tell me how many of you are going there to network with other people okay now put those hands down now tell me how many of you are going there just to listen to speak to, uh, speakers and programs and just learn just learn nothing else okay okay so okay thank you thank you thank you so pretty much what i'm seeing is everybody wants to go learn a few things everybody wants to go and network and many of you are looking for a job so the first thing to do is to plan okay the plan is supposed to be agile the plan is supposed to change but the activity of planning is necessary and by that just take a look at all the sessions out there figure out which sessions you're gonna like, which sessions you don't like, which days you're gonna visit the career fair. And if you're looking for a job, don't put career fair at the last minute. Why? Because the interview slots are probably already full by that time. So if you are going there to look for a new job, you want to make sure that you visit the career fair the first day itself. And better yet, get working before. So let's let let me structure my tips into three sections. One is what do you need to do before the uh, conference? What do you need to do during the conference? And what do you need to do after the conference? Right. So before the conference, all of you need to look at the uh, agenda, figure out which sections you like, which career, uh, when are you going to go to career fair? When are you going to take breaks? Because it's all virtual this time, and your eyes are going to get tired. So when are you going to take those breaks and um, how are you going to spend the day? So plan that out. If you are looking for a job, make sure your resume is in the VGHC database. Make sure it's machine readable and human readable, both. Make sure you apply to those positions that you find interesting. Make sure you look at, and I know uh, I'm probably going at a mile an hour, uh, 100 miles an hour, so I'm going to slow down. You should also research all the sponsors of the conference and go check out the available positions on their websites. Because they may or may not put all the positions in the VGHC database. But if you see a position outside and if you can reach the, the recruiter for that company, the career fair, you can talk to them about that position. In fact, that is how I have gotten several job offers because when I was attending as um, attending GHC in the initial few years, they were only hiring interns and, and fresh college grads. They did not have a whole lot of positions for senior women. And so I went prepared and I was able to take those conversations and turn them into in, in interviews. So go ahead and do that. You should also go and research if you can find the recruiters ahead of time. If you can try and connect with them and see if you can already schedule interviews. Yes, most of the people are waiting for the recruiters to reach out. Most of the people are saying, I've put in my resume in the database, now they're gonna reach out. Don't just wait for that, see if you can expedite that yourself. Okay, um, so those are some of the things you need to do before the conference. Um, also, there is an awesome Facebook group you want to attend that. It's called Great Shopper Celebration 2020. It's a Facebook group, very lively, very active group. Thousands of uh, women are there. Go ahead, join that, ask questions, help each other out. As much as you are looking to get help from others, you are in a position to help others. And so 
start by giving and others will respond in kind so go ahead and join the social channels if on linkedin you see uh, search for hashtag vghc20 see what comes up see who's going get that networking going right away and those are some of the things that you can do ahead of time i am looking at some chat all right uh, yes i'll i'll get to that uh, okay then um during the conference like i mentioned you um you are going to be uh, attending the conference virtually so it's very important that you take breaks you are also going to be chatting with folks virtually and you will be on video camera so make sure you are in a surrounding that is not very cluttered and you're wearing some clean clothes do not have wrinkles in your clothes irony this is my pet peeve i see somebody who comes ready for an important meeting and their clothes are wrinkled i'm like if you can't pay attention to detail on your own clothes how can i expect you to pay attention to work and so everything about you speaks something about you right everything that you put out there should be thought through so wear clean clothes be in a clean environment and bring your a game if you don't go as if it's a scavenger hunt and i have to talk to recruiters today no if you're not feeling you are uh, at your 100% then take a break introverts have an especially hard time because talking to, about themselves continuously takes a toll in a world in a non virtual setting when i used to go and i'm i'm on the borderline of introvert slash extrovert um, most people don't guess it by looking at me that i am an introvert but i i am a borderline introvert so it used to be that i would go to these conferences and there will be somebody talking to the recruiter and i will just stand and i'll just listen for a few minutes then i will start talking but it is going to be different this time around most likely it will be a zoom conference like this there will be some breakout uh, rooms that you have to go and you have to get going when you are in that room so it is going to be a little harder so be kind to yourself and and make sure you take some breaks research the company and the position somebody talked about elevator pitch make sure um, yes you should have a generic elevator pitch that you can get give everywhere but if there is a company of your dream is there a if there is a role that you really really like make sure you have something specific about that in your elevator pitch why that company why that role and why you um those will be some things that you can do to stand out in the career fair um as far as the sessions go take session notes one of the great ways of of uh, of getting some networking going and uh, the brand uh, or and, and creating your online presence is when you take session notes go and make a post on twitter or linkedin or some other social media channel where you say i attended the session by so and so speaker this is these were the main key, key these were some key takeaways and thank the speaker for spending their time on that session speakers like me or anybody else when we are going to grace hopper and speaking we don't get paid for this we take time off we go there we speak and we come back and honestly most of us are not expecting anything in back we are doing it because we really care about sharing our knowledge and we care about helping others but once in a while when other people respond back and and give you that recognition it goes a long way in standing out from the 100 people who normally connect with me after a session right so imagine a speaker she goes or she or he goes and gives a session to 500 people gets 300 linkedin requests after that but if somebody goes and along with the linkedin request also writes a a linkedin or a twitter post and and thanks them publicly they stand out so that's just some of the tips in how to network in a way that works better right um so and you don't have to like be fake if you don't like the session please don't do that but if, but if you like it just pay it forward okay 
Um, the other things you can do is you can write a blog post about your experience at GHC. In fact, we have a medium publication called From GHC with Love, which is a shared diary of GHC attendees. There is also an Instagram uh, handle called My Colors of Grace. Uh, I can put that in here, which uh, and I, I I help with that. And we do speaker uh, or, or sorry attendee spotlights. So if any of you want to be featured on on that on that Instagram handle or if you want to write your experience and you want to be published in the medium uh, publication, go ahead and reach out. We'll make sure it happens. And that way you can create some social media pres presence around uh, your profile as well. So, and after the session, uh, or not after the session, but after the Grace Hopper conference, follow up. If you spoke to a recruiter, try and get their contact information or get a email address where you can follow up and make sure you send them a thank you note uh, and you reiterate your interest in the position and you follow up because it used to be that people would get an offer on during the conference itself but it normally only happens for people who are interviewing on day one or day two and those interview slots are normally filled ahead of time so the way it works is companies don't want to come in and then wait for you to come and apply and then fill those spots. Yes, they will have some open slots every day, but they try to fill those spots ahead of time by reaching out to candidates and arranging those conversations. So in some cases, especially if you are an intern or a fresh college grad, you might be able to get an offer within the conference days. But for a lot of people, that initial conversation translates to more interviews down the road and so at my level for example all i can hope to do in grace hopper is just a first screening round i still have to do an on-site after the conference and so people get busy after the conference and so unless you follow up um, it can take more time so you are the one who has to be on top of that communication and keep that ball rolling so make sure you send those thank you emails out. If there were some sessions that you particularly liked, go ahead and, and um, let them know. Uh, start figuring out how do you keep that connection going? How do you keep that network going? And then consider being a speaker next year, helping other people out. So I know I, I went at like 500 miles an hour, but that was because I wanted to make sure that there was enough time for Q&A. Um, should we get started with the Q&A? Yes, definitely. All right. So feel free to let me see. If... Oh, sorry. <laughs> Are you going to pick out the questions? Um, we can just read out in the chat if you want to. OK. Let's see. OK, let's see. Um, Kani is asking, I wish to learn about how to navigate through GHC and also how to create an effective elevator pitch. I actually gave a webinar on how to create an effective elevator pitch. Um, we, we can put that link up here. And or, or maybe towards the end, if you guys give me five minutes, I'll take a break and I'll put all the resources in the chat over here, or I can send it. Um, to the moderator and she can send it out later. Yeah, I can okay, send what are the chances of hiring in the career? Uh, so Akshata is asking, what are the chances of hiring in the career fair itself for internship? Yes, that happens. But like I mentioned, companies are coming there and the slots are pre-filled. They have already done some screening and a conversation. Those are the ones that more typically convert into internships right away. Um, if you are able to get a job uh, or, or, a, or a interview on day one itself, then also you have a higher chance. But if you get an inter uh, internship interview on the last day, they may or may not be able to make a decision right then and there. So try to front load all of that work to increase your chances of getting the offer there. Okay, while uh, Aditi is asking, while talking to the recruiter and have already applied for the job role, can you tell what to ask and how to ask? 
Should I directly ask for an interview slot? Why not? That's what you want, right? So um, you will basically say, uh, and I'm not going to dictate you word by word. Of course, you have to figure it out yourself. But what you're going to say is, there is a position that I'm really interested in. This is the uh, this is my resume, and you can give that again and say, this is the particular position that I'm interested in. I would love if I can be considered for that and get an interview slot while I'm here. And yes, you you have to ask for it. Okay, Akriti. Okay. Um, Iris is asking, how do you reach out to recruiters before GHC? So this depends on the company size. For smaller companies, there are only limited number of recruiters. And if you do a LinkedIn search, you can find the recruiters of that company. And chances are those are the ones who are coming to the conference as well. For bigger companies like Google, even the recruiters don't know who is going to, Google, uh, to, uh, to Grace Hopper because it's a really big recruiting team. So there it's much harder, but what you can do is you can search for the hashtag VGHC or VGHC 20 and see if any of the recruiters is talking about it. Sometimes recruiters are the ones posting in groups on LinkedIn saying, hey, we look forward to meeting you. There are company handles on social media. You can try and ask questions over there. It's a little bit hard. Uh, you might actually have to reach out to your friends in those companies and say, hey, can you help me find out who the recruiter is? Um, so some recruiters are, or, and if everything else fails, fails, just reach out to a recruiter of that company and say, I am trying to connect with the recruiters who are responsible for GFC hiring. Um, and you may or may not be that person. Can you help me connect with them? Okay. Arpita is asking, while talking to the recruiter and, oh no, we already talked about that one. Uh, how to, Saloni, how to ask, approach, how to approach the recruiters for referrals? The recruiters not give you referrals. The recruiters can screen your resume and if they think you are a good match for a particular role, they will take it to the hiring manager. Um, they are not the ones giving you referrals. Referrals are given normally given by people who know you. See, in a, in a sense, what is a referral? A referral is a way of vouching for someone. When I give a referral for you, it's like I believe that Saloni is the best person for this job. Take my word for it. Give her a chance. So the best referrals come from people who know you well because they can personalize that recommendation. They can give specific examples of why Saloni is the best person for that job. If you reached out to me on LinkedIn and said, hey, can I get you, give you, a, can you give me a referral for Google? I might say, maybe, maybe I can. And, but will that be a high quality referral? No, it will be like, how do you know Saloni? Oh, she reached out to me on LinkedIn. So then why should I trust Shilpa that Saloni is the best person for the job? Shilpa doesn't even know Saloni. So the, be, the rule of thumb for uh, referrals is people who have worked with you, taught you, they were senior to you, junior to you, in some capacity they have interacted with you and seen your work, they are the best people to give referrals. If that's not possible, places where you volunteer, places where... Um, professional events where you have maybe volunteer taken like if you volunteer at her tech hour the founders of her tech hour might be able to give you a referral because they might not have seen your actual day-to-day -day work but they know your work ethic they know your personality and they know your temperament so they can speak to that but if you just go to strangers it is still better than not having a referral but not by much okay Trina is asking, who should I be reaching out to get fe getting featured in the blog or Instagram page? Okay, uh, here. I am, uh, Grace, that's the Instagram handle. Send a message there or send a message to my handle. This is Shilpa V. Those, are the, uh, those two are for the Instagram handle. By the way, follow me. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> 
for medium publication, it is, I think it's from GXC with love. This year's uh, spotlights are going to start in, in a couple of days. So for this one, again, uh, send me a message on Instagram. Okay. Going back to the question list. One second, I have to go. Oh, I see some familiar names. I know some people who are already, who I already know, awesome. Um, okay. I can read out the next Sorry, one. Sorry, I'm gonna go back there. Here. Oh, and Pratibha already shared the session for elevator pitch. Thank you, Pratibha. Okay, next. Smriti Murali says, as an MS student with two plus years of work experience, what sort of questions can I expect in GHC interview? Well, you, um, I do not know what job discipline you're looking uh, a role in. If you're looking for a software engineering role, some companies will have online tests, online coding challenges. I know Bank of America every year does that. I know that, um, I believe, so Target and other uh, companies also have this online challenge. So they will have you go through an online challenge to that acts as a technical screen. And then based on your resume and the online technical challenge, they will invite you for an interview where they will probably ask you some more coding and some behavioral questions. And that's the software engineering part. If you're looking for a product management role, the technical screen is not going to be there. Um, it is going to be an interview where they, you might be given a case study along with some behavioral questions. And chances are the product management interviews don't land, end up in offers on the same spot because they normally need to go through a, a bigger on-site. So chances are that you will get a follow-up or an on-site invitation after that. Okay. This chat keeps on scrolling, so uh, yeah, I, I keep losing. You, so it's okay. I can read the next one. Yeah. So the next one is from Shreya. How would I make a meaning, meaningful conversation with a recruiter without sounding like a robot with a generic elevator pitch? The best way of coming across as natural is to practice so much that that awkwardness goes away. Um, or just wing it. I say practice. Winging it works uh, sometimes, but not all the time. But the main thing is you have to genuinely like that thing. And when you, whenever you genuinely like something, it just shows. It shows through. What I've seen is if somebody is really interested in an area, their eyes light up, the smile is there, they are leaning forward, the body language shows that they are interested in something. And so, you can try and fake that body language, but I suggest bring it really, like be genuinely interested in things. Chances are, if you research the company, you'll find something that you like about that company and try to remember that. Try to remember why you're excited about this opportunity. Now, I understand. I understand that this is a tough year for a lot of students and a lot of students at this point are nervous about getting roles and they just want a job. Some of you just want a job. And I totally get that. But if you are excited about something or if you can show some excitement, you will have a higher chance of success. Let me tell you a story. I was in a few years ago, I was changing my role and uh, I applied to many companies and I even applied to some companies that I wasn't truly excited about and some companies that I wasn't really a good match with. But there was one specific company and I'm not going to share names here. Uh, I wasn't a truly a good match. I had not worked in that area and I did not uh, have the right skill set. But somehow they called me for, for an interview, the recruiter. And the way I spoke, the way I genuinely expressed my interest, I got a phone interview. In the phone interview, the hiring manager was came in with thinking that I was not a good match for this role, uh, not a complete match. But I still got an on-site invitation. 
because what according to the recruiter we just wanted to meet you like your excitement was so contagious that we were excited about it we wanted to come meet you so i got the on site i didn't get the job because i was not feeling that great and i honestly didn't carry through that excitement through my on site interview <laughs> so that job didn't work out and then the recruiter told me like on phone you were completely different on on site we didn't see the same thing i said yeah i was i was i had fever this is usually a cancel um plus also i didn't bring my a game i i i it was me i had to blame myself on that but the point i'm trying to make here is get them excited about your candidacy and now how do you do that um just get the memorization out of the way you should be like trying to memorize um i am looking for this role um i found your company there like if i'm thinking while well, i'm speaking you know i'm trying to tell you something that's canned if i don't have to think i just have to say then i can focus on my body language i can focus on my voice modulation i can focus on my gestures i can focus on tons of other things then rather remembering that so that's one trick of coming across as natural and not sounding as a robot all right next question the next one um is from muskan is the career fair primarily useful for people looking for software engineering roles what about for data science and product management roles so i was always looking for a product manager role because when i started going to ghc i was a product manager so the first year there were no practically no product manager positions i didn't even take my resume with me it was that much focus on on students and software engineers next year i but i also noticed that they were only giving out free swag uh, when there was a resume so next year i brought my resume and this some uh, places refused to accept that resume saying we are not looking for software we are only looking for software engineers we are not looking for product managers but i have seen a steady growth in uh, roles for all kinds i know that there's a lot of data science uh, folks that get hired in ghc every year and i have been getting several several uh, interviews every single year for the last 2 3 years and so i want to say that there is hiring on all levels however this year is different given covid companies budgets have gone down and a lot of uh, people just don't know how long the situation is going to last so they are hiring conservatively so with that in mind there might be fewer opportunities for product management but data science is a booming field uh, you should expect people to be hiring for data science there and product management too but i'm just saying that overall the numbers are going to be slightly smaller this year mm -hmm. um the next one is from anisha in connection to the um previous question can you share effective tips to apply for applying for project or product manager roles referrals are the best i would say number 1 if you can find referral for a job definitely go through referrals that's one second um, there are some great groups on uh, facebook for women in product where a lot of people post the openings in their companies so um, i will put down two over here women in product then in then there are sub groups so i you know i am part of these two groups women in product is especially lively because of like there are 17000 women or something over there um and then women in product south bay specifically focus to bay area and so there is not that much activity there but at least you know uh, that the uh, attendees or or the members in in that area are all local so you can possibly connect with them and talk to them face to face when covid ends oh also to add real quick i think women in product has an incoming conference to like mid october so that would be helpful yes if you're looking for pm yes and uh, i i i've been attending women in product for several years now i i, I take some gaps uh, once in a while the first year i attended it was just practically like an after a full day session of just presentations 
and like four presentations or something. It has come a long way since then. Now, the last time I went there, there were LinkedIn um, folks. Uh, the, there was a LinkedIn booth with for headshots. There were some Estee Lauder uh, for makeup in order to do that proper headshot. You can get your makeup done over there. There were uh, recruiters over there. It, it was a much bigger affair the last time I attended. And so that might be a place to look. And, and, and if you sign up for their newsletter, they send out job openings in that newsletter every time they send out an email. Great. So the next question is from Shetha Suri. I'm sorry if I pronounced her name wrong, but she asked, so normally companies have a two to three hour interview process with, with screen sharing and whiteboarding, how, but how does it work at GHC? So the way it works in normal GHC is that there is a big, big career uh, fair area and there are, there's a back area where there are, uh, they have put some canvas uh, tents or something and they have made rooms and recruiters after they, after they give you a resume and, and they talk, uh, talk to you, if they choose you for um, an interview, they will reach out to you. Most of the time, I, I was getting phone calls. So phone calls and email, whichever way you said you want to be contacted, they will send and say, hey, can you come? Uh, are you available for an interview between so this and this time slot? And they'll uh, and you can or you can pick the couple time slots that they give. You can pick one, and then they will tell you which booth to go to on that particular day. And on that particular day, when you go in, you show the email to show as a proof that you were actually invited. They let you in there and then um, the interview happens. Um, online whiteboarding thing, they have, like I said, companies are doing online coding challenges ahead of time. In Like Twitter does that, Face, uh, Facebook does that, Bank of America does that at least, and there are a lot more others. So they already kind of know to some level what your technical abilities are. And when they go, when you go over there, you might be, you might be given a laptop to code. So you can do that. Now, how will it work here? You'll probably have a collab edit or a Google Doc or a shared setup where you can code while the interviewer is watching you code. Great. Um, so the next one would be from Iris. So what advice do you have for product interviews during GHC? What advice? So you mean to get them or to nail them? To nail them. So to nail them, hire me as a coach. But regardless, uh, but even if you don't practice, uh, do as many practice mock interviews as you can. Um, there are several groups where people meet up and practice. So I, I'm going to put some websites here. They all have their pros and cons. So there's not one that I like really well over the others. So the, all they have, they all have their pros and cons. And I routinely send my clients for extra practice over there. So one of them is Cramp. The other one is Stellar Pierce. That's my friend Melina's site. Um, and then there is Lewis Lynn Slack channel. And so here you can pair up with other people who are prepared for interviews and you can mock interview each other. The only problem that I have with this whole setup is if the other, if you are not experienced in product interviews and the other person is not experienced in product interviews, you are doing something, but nobody knows what's good or, uh, or is this feedback the right feedback? So it takes time to get better, you know? And uh, if you find a good person to interview with, and if you keep on interviewing with them, that's better. But then you are also getting only one person's perspective. And that, again, might not be right. So what you need to do is practice with a lot of people and a lot of good people. Just a quick follow-up for I'm that. I'm going to my website also. Yeah, this is a quick follow-up for Why that not? one. Do usually PM interviews have tech assessment as well? Or is it a totally different? They don't, so most companies do not do tech assessments for PMs. Google does have a technical round and especially Google Cloud, they are looking for a lot more technical people. If you are applying for, let's say, PM for developer tools, you need to understand that area. If you're applying for PM in cybersecurity, you need to understand that area. So there will be some domain assessment 
uh, but it won't be coding. So they will check whether or not you're technical, but they will not check whether you can code because that's not your primary responsibility. Got it. And then another one from Anita, would you suggest speaking to big companies first or mid-size or a small company first? Okay, this I'll, I'll give you a tip. Don't go to your absolute favorite company first because you have been practicing your pitch and you have been very excited and practicing answering questions and doing all of that, but you've been practicing in a vacuum, right? You're outside. Go to a company that is not your top choice first. Get that nervousness out of the system. Get in the zone. Then go to your favorite company. Noted, Shopa. All right. And then oh, in addition for PM and data science roles, Mino um, is asking if there is UX design role still for the career fair. Not as much, but here's what I, I suggest you do. You look up on the website, you find the roles open, then you go and specifically ask for that. Now, the challenge is they may not have interviewers ready to interview for that particular domain at, at the same time. So you may be asked to follow up a little bit later. However, all the resumes that go through Grace Hopper are reviewed by somebody at least. And so you, it is still better than applying without uh, or, or you're actually you have a person to follow up with. So you might get lucky and they might be able to interview you right away. But it is also possible that they will just ask you to follow up or schedule something for the week after. And then Iris has another question. So what kinds of technical questions do Google ask for PM roles? Oh, I have to uh, give you a full session on that. Uh, there are different categories. There is um, explaining technical concepts, system design, coding, algorithms. So there are a different variety of questions it asks. So yes, Google is the only company that I know that actually asks PMs in some PM interview candidates to code. Pseudocode is fine. They're not looking for exact completeness and, and checks and everything, but they're looking for the algorithm there. Thanks, Shilpa. Another one from Aditi. Hey, Shilpa, I don't have any interviews lined up as of now. Is it a bad sign? How do you think can I bag interviews among thousand others in the same virtual breakout group? If you don't have any interviews lined up, that's fine. I mean, uh, maybe you put your resume a little bit late. Maybe you have certain specialized domain um, skills that most companies are not looking for. Maybe, but there are some companies who are really, really looking for that. And one thing that I can say is chances uh, go check uh, your ats system uh, go see whether your resume is able to pass ats systems or not um there is uh, i'm gonna put a website here oh, oh sorry i uh, okay. um there are online websites available where you can go and check your resume against a particular role and check the ats match and it's possible that the way you have written your resume it's either it's ranking very low on the ATS in the ATS system that that particular company is using uh, or or they might or that company might already have a first batch of applicants selected and they are going to reach out for, to other folks later on. Um, that site. I think this is a site that you can use. Um, again, this site is not exactly like how a company ATS system works. Um, I, and there is actually a webinar on my YouTube channel uh, where we talked about how to get past the ATS system. So again, go to YouTube, go look for my channel. There is a webinar there. And it's probably that's probably the only video in that channel. Uh, but it's a really uh, useful uh, webinar for you guys if you are getting stuck with your resume. 
Got it. And then um, I got a question from her tech hour page. Um, it's just a general question for you, Shilpa. So what made you break into product management? How, why did you transition from software to product management? Oh man, my story is not the typical story. So I, I get, uh, <laughs> it's a funny story. I started my career as an engineer. I was employee number five in a startup and when you have only that many employees employees you practically have to do everything you have to wear all the hats so i was the coder uh, me and the founder were figuring out what features to build how to build them how to market them like we were doing all sorts of things so i think that was my core education in product management after that a few years later when i started my first company Again, uh, I was the one going out to the clients and oftentimes I will not be convinced that the client what is building the right thing. So I'll ask them the questions, I'll figure out their actual problem, I'll propose solutions, I'll design the whole thing and then I'll bid for it and, and uh, get the project. And so I got a lot of practice on how do you figure out the customer's pain points, how do you figure out the right problem to solve, the right solution to solve that problem and all of the, those things. But I never thought of myself as a product manager back then. And while I was working in HP, <clears throat> there were some areas where there was no product manager assigned. So for those areas, I was a software architect and product manager. So I built a localization platform. I built a, a metrics collection platform and I did all of those things. Again, I still didn't think that I wanted to be a product manager. People would tell me to go and uh, that I should be a product manager, but I was like, no, I'm not. I'm fine being an engineer. And then when I decided to change roles, I went to Microsoft and Google for uh, for interviews, among other companies. But those were my top choices. So Google, I did the interview and I never heard back. I, for it, it was like five, six weeks. I followed up, radio silence. And then I interviewed in Microsoft and I was supposed to talk to four people. That interview got stretched to nine people because without telling me, they added more people in the loop and they started evaluating me for product manager. And after that, they said, we think you should be a product manager and um, we don't have a position open. So hold on, talk to some other teams in our company while we open a position for you. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to do that. No, you will be really, you, we, we really think you should be a product manager. So I was talking to those teams. I figured, hey, Google is not happening. Um, and what's the worst that can happen? If I don't like it, I'll find another job. Or if I'll, I'll go back to engineering. So I accepted that role. And while I was sitting in the employee orientation, Google calls back. <laughs> but now it's too late. I'm like, why were you so silent? But uh, that's how I ended up in a product manager. If they had called me back earlier and we would have, like they said, this team is not the right match. We need to figure out the right team for you. We have to go through the team matching process. If they had done that earlier, I would still be an engineer. But there I was. So yeah, I'm sorry. My story is not the typical one. So I don't know what you, I can tell you, except that what you really need to do is develop that product mindset and uh, Think about the user at all points, whether no matter which role you are in, think about the user and it will start showing th through. Great, thanks for that, Shilpa. Um, there's another question. So is the career fair only on one day or all three days? Or actually, yeah. Um, in the actual job, in the actual, um, in the normal Grace Hopper, the career day fair was all days except the last day. So last day, there was only like one hour in the morning or two hours in the morning. Um, in the virtual one, I think they have already listed out their dates and time, and you can check that out. It should be on the website. Got it. And then another one, do we need to re register in, in advance for a company's boot at GHC? I wish I could give you that detail. There's not a whole lot of details have come out on how this career fair is going to work. I know that they are going to send out an email with some details. I don't know when that email is coming out. So just be on the lookout for the email from, from, uh, from Grace Hopper. Got it. Oh, I actually, I remember I saw in a, in the, the GHC group, I think somebody posted about Zoom, that Zoom is hiring and then they posted a link of a tutorial, like how to how to be in the in the booth. 
So I think I can link that one too. Um, also, is it okay to connect with recruiter during GHC and then ask to schedule interviews for later? Yes. Try to get interview right then. That's even better. But uh, if that doesn't work, then definitely. And that is what career fairs are for. Um, I got an email from companies to apply under role, but not, but did not get any interview scheduled. Does this mean they will interview during GHC? Not necessarily. It basically means that they're asking you to apply, but after you apply, your resume will st they will still do some due diligence. So it's a great sign, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have landed the interview yet. Okay. And so then, apply right now and then try to follow up. Okay, got it. And then from Arpita, if, if there isn't any interview lined up before GHC, then what are the chances of getting an interview during GHC for a full-time position? A lot. Why not? I mean, granted that this year is different, but I know that companies do have slots available for uh, those days also they understand that not everybody applies and not all the best candidates are going to be available beforehand so they they do have some slots and if nothing else and if they really like your profile they can schedule something for later and remember the first few years that I go to I did not um, have all those conversations or I did not I am always the last person to apply in the database why because I'm not actively looking uh, but I, I have been able to get, give my resumes and get calls immediately in the, in the conference. Gotcha. And then from Nino, should we add a cover letter to our GHC database? <clears throat> if you have one, go ahead. Um, some people say cover letters are important. I don't do that many cover letters because I normally don't have the bandwidth to customize my cover letters to everything. Um, and if you have it, go ahead. It doesn't hurt. Got it. All right. Sorry. Um, I'm sorry. Go on. <laughs> no, I was saying I'm sorry. I don't have better advice on cover letters here. Um, also, we're almost time. So I'll just get maybe two or three questions more in respect with everybody's schedule. Um, I have, I'll, I'll have one from Angie. She asks, is it possible to apply for different positions in the same company at the same time? And is it possible to apply for both full-time and intern opportunities at the same time? You can apply. Um, I think when you talk to the recruiter, you want to say that, I'm graduating on so-and-so date and I'm looking for a full-time role. However, I do have a lot of bandwidth available right now. And I would love if I can get a, a head start by interning at the company. So I'm also opening, open to an internship position. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, from Ashwarya, is it a good idea to apply beforehand or communicate with them? Oh, sorry, I asked. At the boot and then apply. Uh, you can apply ahead of time. Uh, that, that way they, they should have that in their system also. Um, but I've done both. And uh, I think applying early just gives them more time to process that resume. And if, for example, in the, un in the unfortunate case that it's not a good match, at least you can get that email rejection ahead of time and not waste your time there. So that's one benefit that I see, but the, then the downside is that if they see you in person, sometime it's a completely different thing. So I would say apply and then go and talk again. Not, it, it doesn't hurt. It, it's more work for you. I understand that. But if you really are passionate about a company, go ahead and try that. Got it. And then we're going to have our last question because it's 6.01 already. So um, from Akansha, how can we stay in touch with our connections? Like someone I would want to ask for a referral from or someone that I met um, during GHC. Do you have any tips on that? LinkedIn. <laughs> well, the best, uh, the best kind of network is networking is where both parties bring something to the table. 
Don't network with people simply because you want their help later on. Uh, do offer something to them, even if it's nothing else, but hey, I came across this uh, article and, and I know you are interested in this area, so I thought I'll share this with you. Or, um, or I, uh, I know that this, these people are looking for, an, uh, for a speaker and I know you do speaking, so should, is it okay for me to connect, give your name over there or connect you? Like, you have something to offer. Go ahead and offer that. Best relationships are when they're, uh, it's a two-sided relationship. If it's only, can you do this for me? Can you do this for me? Can you do this for me? People don't have the time. And, and honestly, they don't know you. They don't know you. They are not obligated to help you. And so how do you build that relationship? is by bringing something to the table. And so I'm a big fan of giving before you ask. And yes, 100 people you give, five people will give you something back and it's fine because you only need that many people to help you out. So that's my general life advice to you and networking advice, give before you ask, but also know when to stop giving and move on. Great. All right. Okay. We'll wrap things up. Thank you so much, Silfa, for your time today and for all the insights that you've given. Make sure so to- So can, I, um, can I just quickly person. say something? I already see that some people are coming to my website and, and scheduling virtual coffees with me. Unfortunately, I don't have the bandwidth to do virtual coffees with everybody. If you're looking to hire a coach, then go ahead and, and schedule that coffee with me. But otherwise, reach out to me on LinkedIn. Thank you. And then I think they can follow you on Instagram as well, right? Yes. Yeah, so it's follow me. So over in Instagram. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. And then um, we have a virtual networking here. If you want to drop your LinkedIn in the chat so we could all connect, that would be amazing. And then all the links that Shilpa mentioned, um, we, we, took, we will take note of that. And then we'll send you a follow-up email regarding everything that she mentioned. All right. Thank you so much, guys. I had a great time Thank and you. all the best to you. Mm -hmm. I'll let the Zoom a little, um, open a little bit more so everybody can share their LinkedIn. And all the best for your job hunting or in GHC. And in, I hope everybody will enjoy the experience. Thank you. Have a good night or good day if you're on the other side of the world. <laughs> Bye.